Welcome back, everyone. We are now about halfway through the preseason, but that does not mean the Lakers are done evaluating talent. Earlier today, they signed not one, but two new players to their training camp roster, with those two being Shaquille Harrison and LJ Figueroa. Although, in order to make room for them, they waived Dwayne Bacon and Javante McCoy, who had both previously been under a training camp deal with them. Along with that, we got an update regarding Dennis Schroeder and when he will be available to play, which might be sooner than you thought. We will talk about all of that in today's video and break down how it affects their team moving forward. Before we do that though, I would like to invite you to join our NBA Discord. If you are looking for a place to talk about the Lakers, the NBA in general, or chat with others during live games, then I highly recommend checking it out. At the moment, we have nearly 400 total members, and I'm really hoping we can get to 500 by the end of the year. So if you want to be a part of my community on another level, then be sure to check that out. Without further ado though, let's get back to today's topic, and we'll begin by reviewing the Lakers' new additions, along with why they let go of Dwayne Bacon and Javante McCoy. And for Javante McCoy in particular, it appears that they wanted to give him an opportunity elsewhere. They did not really have room for him in their rotation, and it felt a bit unfair to keep him around. They have an absolutely loaded backcourt after all, and especially in regard to players who prefer the ball in their hands, which is pretty much what Javante McCoy is. Although, while I did understand why they let Javante McCoy go, I don't really get why they waived Dwayne Bacon, because lately, he had been playing fairly well for them. I mean, maybe he gave them word that a different team was offering him a contract, which would be completely understandable, but if that was not the case, then I'm not a big fan of them letting him go. With that being said though, they replaced him with LJ Figueroa, and given that many of you are likely not very familiar with him, I will give you a brief rundown. LJ Figueroa is a 24-year-old, 6'6 forward, and one who went undrafted in the 2021 NBA Draft. Following that, he played one year in the Dominican Republic, and then spent last year playing in the G League, where he put up nearly 17 points per game, about 9 rebounds per game, shot 49.4% from the field, and then 32.3% from beyond the arc. Not really anything that will make your jaw drop, but he is primarily known for being a hard worker, with that being shown through his rebounding and defense. And it likely won't take you long to notice after watching him play either. Figueroa is a very committed defender and rebounder, and is helped with that from his very long wingspan. And I imagine that all of that is why the Lakers wanted him. It's never a bad idea to have a versatile, hardworking forward on your G League affiliate. After all, they do not have the luxury of having much forward depth, and a guy like Figueroa could be an emergency backup plan for them, or at least he could be if he plays well. And at this point, that is what they are trying to find. Both Figueroa and Shaquille Harrison were very likely picked up for their G League team. And speaking of Shaquille Harrison, he is probably the more intriguing, or at least the more well-known one between them, as he has much more NBA experience. A now 29-year-old combo guard, Shaquille Harrison is primarily known for one thing, with that being defense. He never quite developed on offense, and particularly in regard to three-point shooting, but no one can deny his ability to play defense, and that is why he continues to hang around in the NBA. Now I'm not sure they really need another combo guard, but we all know how much the Lakers love point guard and shooting guards, and particularly ones under the height of 6'5". Again, he was definitely more of a pickup for their G League team, but it does continue to be a theme for them, and it might prevent Shaquille Harrison from getting a real opportunity. He will be helped by the fact that Darvin Ham absolutely loves combo guards who play defense, but I cannot imagine or rather am hoping that they would not give their final spot to another guard. Although, much like Figueroa, he would be there for emergency depth if they do end up dealing with injuries or eventually make a multiplayer trade, then maybe Shaquille Harrison could get called up. Regardless though, he will definitely make their training camp more competitive for the time being, and it does help that he has plenty of NBA experience. I'm hoping that both he and LJ Figueroa will get an opportunity before preseason ends, as there are only a few games remaining, and not to mention that another player will soon be joining their rotation, 
with that player being Dennis Shooter. They were finally able to resolve the issue with his work visa, and he will now be joining them this weekend, with him very likely being available for their game on Sunday. And that will be very important in figuring out their rotation. Up until this point, their rotation looked pretty darn good during the two halves that they've actually played, but now they will be adding another player to that mix. And although they are adding a very talented player, it's never easy to find a perfect combination, neither in regard to minutes, nor fit on the court either. And with Shooter not being a perfect, nor even a good fit on the court with another ball dominant player like Westbrook, they will need to figure out a way to work around that. I imagine he will be spending a lot of time on the court with Kendrick Nunn, as they likely want to separate him and Patrick Beverly as well. Not that they wouldn't be a good pairing, but if they are looking to have a good backcourt defender on the court at all times, then that might be something they look to do. And given that Shooter and Beverly are their two shortest players, that may contribute to that as well, as they will already be dealing with height problems even without that. Now, don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that it won't work out, but I am saying that it might be difficult to figure out, and it will be something that both we and they need to be patient with too. And with that in mind, they are going to look a bit different on Sunday, even with the addition of only Shooter, that can make a big difference in their rotation, both in regard to offense and defense. I for one am very curious to watch how that will change things. I already mentioned their rotation, but it might affect the schemes they run on the court as well. One thing that I have been mentioning for a while now is playing full court defense. We've already watched Patrick Beverly do it a few times, and Shooter is another guy who absolutely loves being a pest. Now, I kind of doubt they'll ask him to do that in his first game back, but it will be something to watch for later on, and hopefully by their final preseason game. We already know that Shooter is coming in with a very motivated mentality. He is playing for a minimum level contract, and wants to prove that he is worth much more than that. And thankfully, he now is a much better mentality and overall attitude compared to when he last played for them too. I think it's fair to say that Shooter has been humbled. Everyone knows how he turned down an $84 million contract, only to later sign one worth $5.9 million, but he all around seems to be in a better place now. And hopefully that translates to being a more productive player, which again, we will likely get our first look at during their game on Sunday. To wrap everything up here though, the Lakers brought in two new and intriguing players, and then are likely getting back Dennis Shooter as soon as tomorrow. What do you guys think though? How do you feel about them picking up LJ Figueroa and Shaquille Harrison? And then what do you believe they should do to make Shooter work in their rotation? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.